Hi everyone. So as I was preparing for this energy update, um, I realized a couple of things. First, I didn't do an energy update last week. And um, <clears throat> if you haven't seen the love reading update video, um, I was diagnosed with walking pneumonia this week and a sinus infection. So um, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting well and why, and I was getting worse and not better. Um, no matter how long it took, I've literally been sick all of all of April. I almost said August. That's weird. I've been sick almost all of April. So, <coughs> um, then I found out, so now I'm being treated for that. Um, I am starting to feel better already. Um, I appreciate everybody's love and support, all of the comments. Um, that's not really what I was looking for when I did the update. I didn't, I mean, I love the outpouring of love and healing energy sent. Um, but um, yeah, so that's why things have been kind of shifted. That's why it's taking a while to get the May readings out. Um, you guys know that I won't let you down. They will get out. Um, they're just coming in divine timing because it is not our timing ever. It's always divine timing. And energy is fluid and time isn't linear. So um, we have to remember that. So the big things that are happening this week, first, last week on uh, it was April 24th, Pluto went retrograde. And because I didn't do an energy reading for that, I kind of just wanted to touch base really quick on what Pluto retrograde really means. Um, Pluto will be retrograde for five months, so October. It will go direct. Um, this is all the stuff, all the retrogrades that are happening right now with Pluto and Saturn um, are going to be very karmic in nature. It's in the sign of Capricorn first. Pluto and Saturn, Saturn have been there for a long time. We've been talking about karmic activity for quite some time, especially since the, the South Node is also in Capricorn until May of 2020. So what does Pluto retrograde mean? This is really a time to, this is, this is a time that's going to show you where you're trying to control things in your life and where you need to let go of control, where you are trying to, um, you need to reflect on the power and control that you are trying to have when we need to let the universe come in and guide us to where we're going instead of constantly like smothering things. And this includes relationships, this includes jobs, this includes um, projects that you're working on. Really anything that is not there for your soul's growth, but you're trying to control and you're trying to power through and you're trying to hold on to for dear life, it will be easier to let go during these five months. Now, Pluto goes retrograde every year. So this five-month window, um, <clears throat> if you don't let go of the things during this five-month window, Pluto will go direct again. We'll all go back to our lives again. But that control and that holding on and that smothering of a relationship, it gets very, very uncomfortable. Every time we go through one of these cycles, this is basically the universe saying, now is the time for you to recognize by the way, I'm wearing um, my new sweatshirt, my Fearless Intuition sweatshirt. You can get this on my website. Um, and I'm drinking some chai tea out of my mug. Everything is figure outable. Again, you can get it on my website on the merchandise tab. Um, so now is the time to really reflect on what is it that you're trying to control? What is it that you need to let go of? And allowing yourself to do that. Um, so moving into this week, we have a new moon in Taurus on May 4th, which is going to be really good because you can start new projects that have to do with finances, um, new jobs, new, like really getting grounded into new situations that are happening in your life. It's a very stable time of year. You know, we start with airy season where we're planting the seeds and we really want to start manifesting new things. Then we move into Taurus season where the, the seeds start to grow. It's like you plant the seeds for flowers during airy season and they start to grow during Taurus season and then Gemini season, they are in full bloom. So this Taurus new moon is going to be really good for starting new ventures when it comes to financial ventures, when it comes to 
maybe buying a new home or wanting to get stable and grounded in a new area of your life. So this new moon is going to be really, really comforting for that. It's going to be able to support you in a lot of ways. Um, if you're not looking for a new financial situation, if you're not looking for a new home, this is a really good time to beautify your environment and all the things that all the beautiful things that you have surrounding you to make yourself feel more at home. This is, you know, like go out and get your hands into the dirt, you know, and like really start getting dirty with your hands. That's um, the Taurus new moon um, will support you in growing things. Um, so let's talk about Saturn retrograde. And I literally on my piece of paper, on my notes that I have right here, I actually wrote down the words karma unleashed with Saturn retrograde. And the reason why I wrote that is because during the next four months um, with Saturn retrograde, it will be squaring off with Mercury, it will be sextiling Neptune, it will be conjunct Pluto, and it will be conjunct the South Node. So what does that mean? <clears throat> Mercury squaring Saturn, first of all, Saturn retrograde in itself is... Um, it's really time for you to, you know, what is retrograde? Redo, re-see, rework on. All of the karmic things that are really have been like happening to you or the, the, the things that you have done in the past, Saturn retrograde kind of brings it to the forefront. You can have good karma. You can have bad karma. It all really depends. Like if you did bad, like and everybody does bad things. Nobody's perfect angel except for like maybe Mother Teresa. Um... But if you have done bad things in the past during Saturn retrograde, usually that's brought up in some way, shape, or form. I don't know if you guys have noticed, and this is what I wanted to bring up. I should have brought this up with Pluto retrograde. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but everybody's temper is a little bit short right now. It's been short for a while, but just in the last week since Pluto went retrograde, I mean, like, everybody is biting. I am not a person that gets, like, I can be a very, very patient person, extremely patient person. I mean, I've raised three boys, and they're all still alive, so that's a lot of patience. Um, and I found myself snapping at the boys the other day, and part of it was like, I wasn't really feeling very well, but the other part of it, I realized, I'm like, why am I so snappy today? Like, every single thing that is coming at me, I have, like... You know, like, I'm, I'm like, arguing about it or something. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was totally ridiculous. And then I, I realized it and took culpability of my own actions, which is something that we are being required to do, be very patient with ourselves and other people. But you have to be culpable of your own actions. Um, if you're being bitchy, check yourself. Because it's not always the other person's fault. It's not always the other person that is projecting onto you, sometimes you are projecting onto other people. So that's one of the things with the Saturn retrograde, um, with Pluto and Saturn retrograde that we're really going to have to um, be aware of. Because with Mercury squaring Saturn, if you have ever been a bully in your life, Mercury squaring Saturn is going to kick you right in your own bully ass. Like seriously, if you've been verbally abusive to people in your life, um, you're going to get your ass kicked in a lot of ways with Mercury squaring Saturn because um, you're, there's going to be a huge lack of patience. People are going to be mouthing off right and left, projecting all of their shit onto people. And why? It's because we are having to pay attention to all of the details. We're having to pay attention to every little nitpicky thing that's going on. Mercury squaring Saturn retrograde is all about... Um, focusing your attention on more on how you are presenting yourself in a communicative way to people and what's right and wrong about it. And who are you projecting to, right? Because you know me, like I'm all about telling everybody, be culpable of yourself, be accountable of yourself, be a responsible adult. There's absolutely no reason for us to argue and fight. There are some people out there that are just plain angry at life and angry at the world, and they're going to act a fool. Don't be that guy. Simple as that. This is a time to really check yourself. Don't be that guy. Saturn, sextile, Neptune. And this is all really going to be happening like with the, um, 
Saturn retrogrades when it's at station, and that's like from the 25th of April to like the second, third, second to third before it really starts, you know, because we have that shadow period, but this is where it's really station retrograde, where it hasn't quite picked up the momentum of moving through everything. Um, Saturn sextile Neptune is going to be really good about bringing materialistic gains to spiritual growth, spiritual pursuits. There will be a deeper understanding of what you want in your spiritual goals and how you can get out there and start moving forward with them. And you won't be really feeling, you'll, you'll feel this like push forward into, wow, now I really know what I want deep down spiritually. How can I bring this into fruition? So that's going to be really good. Saturn sextile Neptune um, is going to be really good for that. Saturn conjunct Pluto retrograde. Oh, these, <laughs> this is kind of, this is a really tough transit. And it's a slow transit. So it's going to be happening. Really, they're going to be like right next to each other for probably almost the entire retrograde time. And just, or just a couple of degrees, a couple of orbs, a couple of degrees away from each other, if you will. So this is where you are needing to find patience and determination during, um, while also facing extra responsibilities with less resources and less time. So you're going to be pushed into extra responsibilities in your life, extra things that you need to get done. All of this, like, um, you know that feeling when you get inside of you, that you get inside of you and you're like, oh my God, I have so much that I have to do and I have zero time to do it. Like, there's not enough hours in the day for me to get all of this shit done. That's what Saturn and Pluto conjunct will be pushing you to do. Um, you may need to learn how to let go of control when it comes to change. Because in order for you to change, in order for you to allow yourself to accept these responsibilities, sometimes you have to actually... You have to actually look at everything and be like, I can't do this. Like, this is, it's not possible, right? This is going to be a very deliberate time of change, opportunities, and where am I holding myself back? And it's not just for this week. This is going to happen all through the summer into the fall. So, and plus Jupiter is also in retrograde in Sagittarius still. So my advice <laughs> during this time is stay in your own lane. Um, you may find yourself projecting onto people in very needless times. I've actually found myself doing it as well. Guilty. And then I, but I stopped myself. That's the biggest thing about this retrograde time is it's teaching you how to be responsible for your own actions. Whether you stop yourself before you make a fool of yourself or you make a fool of yourself and then you, you um, respect the fact that there are consequences for your actions. Right? So in saying that, thank you very much for your patience as I go through that. <coughs> I got to take a drink. Sorry. In saying that, Let's get the overall collective energy for the week of April 29th to May 5th. April 29th to May 5th. I can't believe we're already coming up in May. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the collective energy is master. This is the devil card. The devil represents Capricorn. Where is Saturn and Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn? This is the collective energy for the week. So you're, you're having to learn how to master yourself. Now, um, I do, one of the things I wanted to mention before I get started with these cards, one of the things I do want to mention is that um, the personal readings I am doing are only emergency readings. Um, I'm doing 30-minute emergency readings, hour-long emergency readings. I'm also doing 
birthday readings. If you're an Aries, you have two days to order your birthday reading. If you're a Taurus, you have until the end of May to order your birthday readings. Um, so those are available. Those are the only readings, like tarot, like personal readings I will be doing are emergency readings and birthday readings in May. Um, I will be doing Gemini birthday readings starting May 15th, but that will become available then. Don't get confused. Gemini birthday readings aren't available yet, but they will be May 15th. Also, I am doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions for alignment, mastering yourself, master, coming into alignment, and mastering yourself. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because this time period is a really, this this time period is a really good time to check yourself, to be culpable, to be responsible for your own actions. And that's what the alignment coaching session really is. It's all about the one-on-one -on -one coaching to find out where it is that you're blocking yourself from your abundance, where it is from your past experiences, could be past life experiences, what it is that you are specifically doing to, self, to sabotage yourself and you may ask, Betsy, why are you an expert on this? How are you able to coach this? Well, I've been through quite a bit in my life. <laughs> um, the reason why I feel like I am a person that can really help somebody come into alignment with themselves is because I, was, I have been to that dark place where I had to really take a good hard look about who I was and what I was and where I was going. And, a lot, and I had to learn... That alignment isn't about your life being perfect because your life will never be perfect. Alignment isn't about getting to a destination. Alignment is about learning about yourself along the and knowing that you're on a journey and that you can't align to a future if you don't align to the present. So, and I love doing tarot readings. I love doing personal readings with tarot, but I started to find that people want to know what's going on in their future but they weren't ready to hear it from spirit yet because they couldn't even be aligned in their present. I can give you a future reading all day long, but then I have to look at you and say, it's really up to you. You're the one that has all of the tools in order for you to gain better insight into your life and really move forward on your spiritual journey. I can't be the one to tell you, this is exactly what's going to happen on this day if you can't be aligned with where you are right now. So if you feel like you have some blockages in your life and you're not quite sure what they are, um, let me help. And you can find all of my coaching alignment sessions on my website as well. All of the information for the personal readings for the alignment sessions are below in the description box. Okay. So as we are learning how to master ourselves this week, there could be some obsessive qualities, working really hard. What else does um, the devil represent? It rep represents um, addictions. I feel like there's this honesty factor. There's this karmic honesty factor that we're really having to look at. But it's all in... Huh, it's all in effort for soul's growth. I love, the, I love my job. I love my job. So we have the Chariot, the Ten of Swords, and the Fool. So this growth period for you is all in an effort to move forward in your soul's path. But as I said, Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde is going to force you to see. Now, it's totally up to you whether you end the cycle whether you stop repeating the same thing over and over and over again. The Ten of Swords is all about letting things go. It's all about knowing that the worst is behind you. It's all about allowing yourself to give up control and just let things be. It's not the easiest transition. It's not the easiest ending to be in, but it is an ending. And then what do you get after that? You get a fresh new beginning. But you have to take a risk. What's that risk? You are really betting on yourself. Who better to bet on but yourself, right? 
allow yourself to see the best aspects of you and be like, hey, I'm going to bet on her. I'm going to bet on him. You look in the mirror one day. If you can't look in the mirror, look in your eyes and say, you know what? You're, I'm going to place a bet on you because I'm. It's a, that's a pretty good bet. Then you're blocking yourself from something. And it doesn't mean that everything has to be in line. It doesn't mean that everything has to be in line. It means you have to be ready to put things in line, to put things in order, to bring things into alignment. That's what mastering yourself is all about. It's about being aware of your own bullshit and then doing something about it. What do you do after you take a risk? What happens after you take a risk? Things start to fall into place. We have another ending here or another close. Uh, I wouldn't really say ending, but the 10 of pentacles, the 10 of pentacles is also, um, you know, the last, what are tens? Tens are endings, tens are closure. closure. Um, but the 10 of pentacles means that you have it all. That doesn't mean materialistic you have it all. Because you can have the house, you can have the car, you can have the job, you can have all the things and be dead inside. How many millionaires do you know who are, who gained all of their existence in a soul sort of way? Now, I know a couple of people that have gained, that, that have material gains by using their spiritual growth. And, do, and walking on their soul path. But I know a lot of people that are dead inside. <laughs> but they have all the material things. Right? So it's really up to you to see what that Ten of Pentacles is. Like, I feel like I have the Ten of Pentacles. I feel like I'm victorious. Six of Wands. I don't have everything. It would be nice to have more. But I'm constantly gaining more. I mean, I've got gains every single day just because it's not the lavish lifestyle that you think that Ten of Pentacles is supposed to be doesn't mean it's not for your, for your own personal growth. And then we have the King of Wands. So very interesting here. I feel like there's this need for confidence and allowing ourselves to really stand up. But the King of Wands isn't a projector. The King of Wands isn't somebody that will cut another person down. The King of Wands is somebody who is very confident in where he's going and what he's doing, could even be a public figure. But the King of Wands is somebody who despite the things that he's come through, despite the fires, despite the turmoil, despite all of those tower situations that he went through in the past, he still knows he's got it good because he takes, he, he bets on himself. And what is he betting on? The brightest future that he could have. He's rising above and mastering himself and aligning himself to the life that he wants now. So... The only way for you to move forward is to let go. But if some of you are in a Four of Pentacles life right now, where if you look at that guy, he's kind of miserly and he's holding on to all of his pentacles really, really, really tightly. Um, if that guy doesn't let go, the universe can't come in and work in his life. He's got to be able to let go of one of those pentacles and allow the universe to flow in and out, right? If he doesn't, that chariot's not going anywhere. That chariot is... Stay in put. I feel like a lot of you are moving forward, but I feel like it's kind of a bittersweet thing. That's what the Ten of Swords is making me feel like. Yeah. It's like you're manifesting some really great things on the backside of something really, really painful. You had to lose a lot in order to start gaining. And I think there's a fear that if you move too fast, you're going to lose more. I don't want you to be afraid of that because the universe is totally supporting your actions of moving forward. The universe is totally supporting your actions of pushing into greatness and taking a bet on yourself and taking a risk on yourself. I feel like a lot of you are venturing into a new journey, a new lifestyle. Let's see what the fool is. Yeah, totally. 
And here's the thing. It's always scary. It is always scary to take a risk. I mean, that fool, he doesn't know what's at the bottom of that cliff when he jumps off of it. Sorry. He doesn't know what's at the bottom of that cliff when he jumps off of it. He's just trusting and having faith. But the thing is, is the sun is out. And when the sun comes out, you can guarantee that that risk is going to be for the best. It's going to be a really, really good risk that you're going to take because you're betting on yourself and you are the best person to bet on. Not betting on everybody else, not holding on to another relationship, not holding or another person or a job or betting on, you know, giving yourself to whatever future you thought you had to be in alignment with is no longer available to you. Because mastering yourself and growing yourself is all about faith. And it's all about leaving the things behind that, that you weren't growing in. You were very stagnant before. Right? So then we get to the Ten of Pentacles. <clears throat> I feel like this Ten of Pentacles is, yeah, is more of a distant thought. But um, with the Three of Wands, see, you're like waiting for your ships to come in. You're waiting for your Ten of Pentacles to come in. Here's the thing. Allowing yourself to recognize that that, those ten, that Ten of Pentacles is on the horizon, it doesn't have to be here right now, but it's coming. If you allow yourself to see the beauty of what's coming to you, that Ten of Pentacles is going to come a lot easier than it would if you're like, oh, woe is me, I'm not really sure, blah, blah, you know, maybe I'm good enough, maybe I'm not. That's not how, that's not how it is, right? Whatever you're moving on from, whatever you guys are moving on from, the Six of Wands, or the Six of Swords on the Six of Wands, whatever it is that you're moving on from, whatever it is you're moving away from, is guaranteed successful. And the reason why it's guaranteed successful Let's say it again. You're betting on yourself. You're betting on your growth. You are mastering yourself. Whether you believe that it's happening or not, as you see the changes in your life get better and better and better, you'll look back at this time and be like, oh yeah, Betsy said that I was going to be betting on myself and taking risks and here it is. Oh. Uh, Let's see what the King of Wands is. The King of Wands is confident. Um, he's determined. Ooh, and apparently he's fiery and passionate too. He's coming into alignment with himself. Therefore, he's able to align to relationships too. And the lover's relationship is one of them that he wants to come into alignment with. So um, this King of Wands, because he is aligning and mastering himself, He's also mastering money. He's also mastering a new future. He's also mastering victory and growth and being seen and opportunities and love. If this is not being shown to you this week, I want you to recognize that every single action you are taking forward in your life where you're not standing still is going to bring you all of these things. That's what being in alignment means. It doesn't mean that you have it all right now. It means you can manifest from a place of abundance. Whether you have it right now or not, you're still manifesting from a place of abundance because you're betting on yourself. That doesn't mean that you're all love and light and everything is flowery and everything is good and great and yada yada. There are still bad things that happen in people's lives. Trust me. But being in alignment means you are doing the best for yourself for your own soul's growth. So I feel like that's what this week is all about. I feel like there's a lot of gains. I feel like there's a lot of lessons that are going to be learned. I feel like this is really, this might even be a reading for the next five months, five to six months, let's say that. So you may want to come back and watch this throughout the summer into the fall and see if it's resonating with you, um, make a mental note. Make a mental note. All right, guys. I love you so much. Thanks for your patience with all of the readings. I will get the May general readings out as soon as I possibly can. 
Um, I still get very tired very easily, and I do have um, personal readings and alignment sessions that I am booked with right now as well. So please be patient with me. I love you all, and if you want to book a reading with me or you want to book an alignment session with me, check out my website. All of the information is in the description box. Have a great week. Bye.